Good morning, and welcome to Augustana. My name is Chris. We are glad that you have joined us for worship today, whether online or in person on Treaty 6 territory and homeland of the Métis. We welcome the rich diversity in which we all are created and seek to be a place where we can live out our gifts in community together. So if you are new or newish to our community or have been here a long time, <laughs> know that there is a place for you where you can participate and share your gifts and lives in a safe environment as you feel able. On behalf of our community, a big thanks for Mick Vickis playing today, for our tech guru Greg up on the cameras running our live stream, and all of those who are assisting today that help to make this time of worship and fellowship ap so thank you. And after the service, uh, beautiful and life-giving too is a little bit of a coffee time. You're also welcome for that as well. Thank you. Morning, everyone. Is that working? Huh. How about now? Better? Okay. Uh, just a couple of announcements as we gather today, um, just to bring your attention to. Um, lots going on, and so make sure to take that bulletin home and have a read through, but uh, just a few time-sensitive pieces here. Uh, just a reminder that there is um, men's chorus, Saskatoon Men's Chorus has a concert today at 2.30 at Zion, if you want to do that, it would be a beautiful time. Um, Luther Care Foundation has their nicest pie fundraiser, and the orders for that have to be in by the 26th. Um, oh, I'll do it later, but remind me if I forget during the offering today, uh, every a couple times a month we send out slips for kind of a reverse, um, uh, draw, well not draw, but uh, offering, thank you, for uh, the food bank. Uh, and, and I just want to give an update on that. We have um, the blue bin out in the foyer there. Um, only once have we been able to call the food bank to get them to come and pick it up because we have so many people coming on a regular basis uh, who have food insecurity uh, concerns in our neighborhood. And so often they'll come and they'll fill up a grocery bag from that bin. And so uh, thank you to those who have given in the past and for those who continue to do that. And so when the offering goes out, if you want to take a slip of paper or two, you're welcome to bring those items back or just any, any other offerings that you might uh, want to give. Um, next Sunday, um, we're going to lift up the, the ministry of Micah Mission. And it's a, uh, it's, a, it's a mission here that helps uh, to bring healing and hope and restoration to community members who have been incarcerated. And um, you can read a little bit more about it in your bulletin. Um, but um, they have a Remember Me campaign um, for that uh, is marked by on next Sunday. Um, and we're invited to, to bring an offering of $5 or more to, to that ministry so they can continue to provide services to inmates uh, here um, in Saskatoon. And so if you want to learn more about that, I invite you to, to go to their website and see all of the good work that they do. But we'll try to lift that up a little bit more next week um, as well. And then probably in May, we're going to have uh, someone from my commission come and just explain a little bit more about what they do here in the city. I know we have other things in the bulletin, um, but I, again, I invite you to take that home. I know there's a big choir concert that we're putting on, a fundraiser at the end of May, so keep that one in your, in your calendars for sure. As we gather into this time of worship, um, let's just center ourselves as we uh, turn to our confession and forgiveness. Before you do that, just one correction in the bulletin. The Synod Convention registration for delegates is now closed. We will accept visitors for a short time yet. Okay. So, so, so if you missed your chance to be a delegate for the Synod Convention, you can still come and gaze through as a, as a visitor. All right. I invite us to uh, stand and turn to our confession for this morning.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives our sin and whose mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so we confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. And so as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I invite us to turn to page uh, 5, hymn number 520 in our red books as we sing our gathering song today and as we do that we'll light our candles this morning.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And so we sing together our Kyrie on page 98. Let us pray. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us, and we shall be satisfied. Heal us, and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we listen to our readings.
A reading from Acts chapter 4, our first reading. The next day of the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the corner stone. There is no salvation, there, sorry, there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please join at the psalm, following the order of service, on the bold print. Thank you. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And now we'll hear a special anthem by the choir.
Q Choir. <coughs> I'll say that again. Thank you, Choir. Our second reading was from 1 John. We know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God. And we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the Spirit that he has given us. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please let us stand for the gospel acclamation. Oh, sorry. Children's time. Right. Before we stand, if any young people among us want to come to us. I'm a little ahead of myself. Today's a good day to come to the front. I have swag. And I have lots if, if bigger people want them on the way out too. So, what does this look like? <laughs> Pastor Kirk, they work really good as Frisbees. I could have just tossed you one. <laughs> what do these look like? Kind of look like a maze, don't they? Do you do lots of mazes? <laughs> Anara, you've got this case. You're doing it already before you even finished explaining. <laughs> so. No, you ha not like this, because a maze has lots of places where you can get confused, right? It tries to trick you and send you the wrong way. These ones don't. Uh, for bigger people out there, how many of you know what a labyrinth is? Hey, everybody who paid attention at the supper last fall. Uh, so, remember how we've been talking about prayer all of Easter? Just nod. I've been doing school for 20 years. Just nodding gets you a, lo a long way. Okay? <laughs> These are a, a way of praying without saying any words. Would you believe that? No? Okay. Well, because sometimes it's hard to find the words we need to use, right? So what you do with these, and these ones are a small version, so they fit in one hand. And you take a pen, and you put it in at the start there, okay? And you can trace it all the way through. And the path is going to double back on itself, and sometimes it looks like you get really close to the center, and then it turns away. And these are just small versions. The biggest, biggest one, and one of the oldest ones, is at a cathedral in France. And people used to walk all the way across Europe to this cathedral. And then they'd get there, and they'd have to walk this labyrinth to get to the very center. It was a little, little pilgrimage at the end of a long pilgrimage. So a little walk of prayer at the end of a long walk of prayer. I'm not going to make you walk all the way across Europe before you do this. <laughs> These ones, and what, we, what you do is you can think about a question you have for God or something you need help with the entire time. And you trace your pen all the way to the center, and then you just sit there for a minute and you think about it. And then you trace your way all the way back out. And like I said, these are just small ones. There's two big ones outside in town. 
uh, one at Resurrections on Lenore, right? One at Resurrection Lutheran. So if you ask your adults, they might be able to take you there and you can walk it instead of just tracing it. Uh, and then there's a very, very big one that they can lay out at Emmanuel Anglican just down the street, I think. The great thing about the Anglican Church is it depends on who's on staff of what cool stuff we have. Um, but this is something you can take and you can put in your backpack and you can do it at school with your teacher's permission. You can do on a long drive. You can just trace it over and over again. And sometimes when we get really big feelings and we need to just calm ourselves down, we can trace one of these and pray to God about our big feelings. And God can help us make those big feelings a bit easier to be in in that moment. Okay? So we're not going to pray at the end of, of uh, Kids Talk today because I've got a, tr I've got a challenge for you. Do you act how much of Pastor Kirk's sermon do you usually listen to? <laughs> yeah, so um, the great secret is when I was not much older than you, I used to sit there as a server and play chopsticks during the sermons because they don't have a lot sometimes for people our age. Um, but to be clear, people my age when I was a teenager, I listen now. <laughs> um, but how about during the sermon today, you see if there's a pen or a pencil in your pew and you can trace this in and out, okay? Does that sound like a good plan? Does that sound like a good plan? Okay, perfect. Well, I'm going to let you go back to your seats now. If you want to switch out your colors, you can. If you want to grab a second one for one of your adults, you can. Okay? Thank you very much. We continue this morning with our gospel acclamation on page 102, 102 in your red ELWs. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold, and I must bring them also, and that they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. And for this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it back up again. I have received this commandment from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. For those of you who are listening to my sermon today, <laughs> tomorrow we know is Earth Day and the start of Earth Week. For people worldwide who are part of the environmental movement, but I would suggest for all of us uh, as well. And for the church, is, it is the fourth Sunday of Easter, and Easter is a season where the church is reminded of the resurrection of Jesus. Our texts in this season include readings from the book of Acts about the birth of the church and the new life, the Easter life, that God promises for the whole cosmos. And we are reminded during this week especially that we aren't always helpful in carrying out those promises 
that God has for the cosmos. We know that our plastic waste has killed ocean life, that our planet's ice is melting faster than we thought, that climate change is bringing more and more disasters that find humanity unprepared, and more and more species becoming extinct, never to be seen on earth again. And so perhaps more than ever, it is an important time for the church to begin to live out those promises of Easter, but not just for ourselves, for the cosmos that God so dearly loves. Today, the scriptures give us the image of a, good, of a shepherd God, a God whose vocation it is to take care of the creatures and to protect them from all harm. Jazz vocalist Bobby McFerrin, yeah, it's that guy, the don't worry, be happy guy, beautifully rewrites this psalm that we had today in this way. The Lord is my shepherd, I have all that I need. She makes me lie down in green meadows beside still waters she will lead. She restores my soul and she rights my wrongs. She leads me in a path of good things and fills my heart with songs. And even though I walk through the dark and dreary land, there is nothing that can shake me. She has said she won't forsake me and I am in her hand. She sets a table before me in the presence of my foes and she anoints my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely, surely goodness and kindness will follow me all the days of my life and I will live in her house forever, forever and ever. I hear in this psalm these promises of green earth and clean water, the promise of abundant food and wine and oil, the promise that this planet is made for goodness, for mercy, and for home. The psalmist writes famously, the Lord is my shepherd and centuries later, the writer of the Gospel of John attributes the same imagery to Jesus. I am the good shepherd. And these images of shepherd and sheep, they show up a whole lot of times in the Bible. But the imagery can be complicated. Complicated in part because most of us don't have a ton of direct experience with the practice of sheep keeping. But more than that, shepherding can get sort of sentimentalized into this sort of mushy idea of a Jesus who's just super wise and gentle with soft, flowing hair <laughs> and a gentle beam of sunshine on his skin. But we know actually that Jesus is many things. Jesus is not only gentle, but fierce and bold and sometimes offensive. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, but we also call Jesus the lamb. And so this imagery is complex and messy. And we're not the first ones to idealize shepherding. By the time Jesus lived on earth, shepherding was no longer uh, the central economic practice. But there was this collective memory of a time when nomadic ancestors roamed the countryside and kept sheep as a source of life. And this ancestral connection to sheep and shepherding carried over so that when the people wanted to talk about leadership, someone responsible for the well-being of a group, it made sense to talk about shepherds. Throughout the ancient Near East, kings and deities are compared to shepherds and that royal scepter is said to have evolved from a shepherd's crook. 
But Jesus reminds us that there are many different kinds of shepherds. It wouldn't have been hard for the hearers of John's gospel to imagine what Jesus meant when he talked about the hired hand. The quasi-leader who sort of acts like they care for the flock, but as soon as things get serious, it becomes clear that they're only really in it for the money. A leader who doesn't have any sense of care or common belonging with the flock, but leaves them to be hurt by the forces of evil and death, well, that kind of leadership isn't hard to imagine because they and we have experienced it. It is harder to imagine what it would look like for world leaders or people in positions of authority to be good. And so the Gospel of John provides us with this image of the model shepherd, someone who would risk personal harm for the sake of the group's well-being, someone who belongs to the flock and the flock belongs to them, someone who loves and cares for the sheep, who notices the other sheep also and so is always gathering them in. The good shepherd is good not because they have some special skills that the hired hand doesn't, but because of relationship. The reason the good shepherd doesn't sell out is because they are connected by this deep mutual knowledge, creature to creature, that one's life only makes sense when all are safe. In her book, Hallelujah Anyway, author Anne Lamont tells a story of an encounter one day with a mountain goat. She was sitting out in a field alone and the mountain goat wandered over grazing and at one point it looked up from the grass and saw her still chewing. And the mountain goat looked at her right in the eyes and just held gaze. And this went on for a few moments, she said, not exactly even sure how long, just staring at each other. And she describes it as such an intimate and awesome moment. Here is this creature, a hundred pounds bigger than her, whose life has gone on for many years before this moment and will continue after. This is a wild creature that doesn't depend on me, but she sees me as a creature and I see her. We just see each other and both marvel at one another's beauty in our own unique creatureliness. Make no mistake, God is not the only shepherd of, of, the human, of only the human creatures. God is also shepherd of the literal sheep and of the mountain goats and of the snails and of the bats who may or may not still live in our balcony. God is the shepherd of the green pastures and of the still waters and of their insects and of the ice caps and of the atmosphere. That is the way that God relates to each created thing in the cosmos with deep knowledge of our wild creatureliness and deep care of our well-being with no creature left out. So this Easter, we as the church are learning more and more each day what it means to trust in God's abundant new life, proclaiming that Easter life is not easy. It's not simply idealism. It doesn't mean pretending that the forces of the cross and grave aren't as real and harsh as we know that they are. Instead, it's a fierce clinging to God's promise. Proclaiming Easter is insisting week after week that God's future will not just be a far-off dream, that God's love will not be imprisoned in the realm of word or speech, but will be made real in truth and in action. Easter 
in an era of charred forests and polluted waters, Easter is green pastures and still waters that feed the body and the soul. And in the midst of individualism and aggressive enforcement of the status quo, Easter is pointing to restoration, to mercy, to the way of good things. And when it becomes difficult to imagine that we might ever emerge alive from the depths of shadow and despair, God shows us a future, not without valleys or wolves, but a future in which we are not alone, never abandoned by the one who is good. God teaches us that we are beloved, that we are cherished and invited into God's cosmic party table, overflowing with food and drink, and we begin to notice that we are not alone anymore but part of a much bigger flock than we realize is realize that stretches out beyond borders and across species to the whole creation. In Easter, no longer is abundant life obscured. Now we can perceive clearly the one who is leading us always towards our home, which is abundant life. And for that we say, thanks be to God. Amen. Alleluia. The King of Love, My Shepherd Is, number 502 in your red books, I invite us to stand and sing together as you're able.
Friends, I invite you to turn to page 105 in the front part of your hymnals to the Nicene Creed as together we confess our faith, joining all of those from the flock who have gone before us. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, whom with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and a life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we pray together. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Every petition will end with the words, God of grace, and you can make the prayer your own by responding, hear our prayer. Shepherding God, Gather your church whenever we wander from you and one another. Empower our church in ministries around the world to worship and serve alongside global companions as equal partners and co-workers in the gospel. God of grace, yeah. hear our prayer. Nurturing God, preserve the health of biomes and ecosystems. Inspire scientists, researchers, conservation organizations, and all people entrusted with the task of caring for creation, that we may be better stewards of the world around us. God of grace, hear our prayer. Almighty God, lead nations and communities to share resources, cooperate in solving conflicts, and listen to the wisdom of indigenous peoples. Help all those with power to share it and to use such power for good. God of grace, hear our prayer. Loving God, protect the very young and the very old, those living without housing, victims of domestic abuse, and all who live with chronic illness or compromised immune systems. Guide communities to actively care for people who are vulnerable. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gracious God, help this and all communities of faith to listen for your voice. Call us away from things that distract us from following you. Invite us to more deeply love and serve people who are lonely, isolated, and on the margins. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, all in our hearts and minds, trusting in your abiding love. Through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen.
And may the peace of Christ be with you all. I invite you to stand and share a sign of God's peace with one another as you feel comfortable. As we take our offering, I didn't forget the baskets. I'm going to send those around. I'll send one on each side. You can cross at the back and send them back up. I don't know. I don't know what's in each basket, so it might be different. <coughs> but thank you for that. And uh, yeah, we'll take the offering, the rest of the offering for the work and the mission of this place. For those of you who are online and watching, there are prompts on the screen for you to participate in that is if you wish as well. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth, for day by day you shower us with your blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand as we gather around God's table. 
page 107 in the front. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And so let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should in all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of Jesus our Savior, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself away for our sin and in whose dying has destroyed death and in whose rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and the witnesses of the resurrection with the earth and sea and all of their creatures. We praise your name and we join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God of the universe, for your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea and for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus your anointed one. And praise to you for the death and the resurrection of Christ and for your spirit which is poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Drink from it, all of you, in remembrance of me. And so with this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of our faith, that Christ has died Christ is risen, Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast and grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread and raise us up as the body of Christ for the world, breathing new life into us. And so send us forth, burning with justice and peace and love. Come, Holy Spirit. And with your holy ones of all time and in all places, with the earth and all of its creatures, with the sun and the moon and the stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. And so gathered into one by that same Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. And so come and eat at God's table. All of you are welcome. Amen.
Come for all is ready.
Receive a blessing from God's table this day. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace both now and always. Amen. Amen. And so we pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. With a reminder that we have uh, coffee and stuff out there, uh, you're welcome to stay. I invite you to stand for a final blessing uh, to take into your homes and hearts this week. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. May the God of resurrection power and the Christ of unending joy and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Go, my children, with my blessing. Number 543, we'll sing together. Thanks to Rory for doing our postlude today as we leave this place. There is also one last thing. There's going to be the sign up for any of the worship assisting stuff is going to be circulating during coffee. So if you'd like to assist with that, it's there. Alleluia. Go in peace. Rejoice and be glad. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.